Hi, today I will show you how you can combine the fair value gap indicator with support and resistance key levels and automate breakouts detection in Python. Then we will backtest this strategy automatically using historical data and our Python code. The Python code I'll be using today for the backtest is available for download for free from the link in the description of this video. The fair value gap indicator was introduced in one of our previous videos. I will also leave a link to that video in case you are interested in the details of this indicator. In summary, we are looking for three consecutive candles showing an imbalance in price action, where a gap forms between the first and the third candles wicks signaling potential areas where price may revisit. We will also distinguish between bullish and bearish fair value gaps forming in the up or down directions. But identifying fair value gaps alone is not enough for a robust trading strategy. To improve its reliability, we will combine this indicator with support and resistance levels to build a more structured approach to trading. Support and resistance zones help us filter out weak signals and focus on setups that align with key market structures. When a fair value gap forms near a strong support or resistance level, it can serve as a confirmation for potential trade entries. So in brief, we will consider entering the market in the direction of the price breaking through a support or a resistance level and forming a fair value gap area simultaneously. The signals generated using our algorithm are marked using these purple points on the chart to visualize potential trades. These three examples are valid signals since the price breaks above the uh, resistance forming a fair value gap area at the same time. Obviously, the signal doesn't work perfectly all the time and we can have false signals like it is the case for this trade. Here the price reverted back changing its direction. For the trade management, we will use a very simple approach. Positioning the stop loss level at the low of the candle forming the fair value gap. So that's the long candle where also the breakout is happening. And that's in the long direction. Of course, in the short direction, we position the stop loss at the high of the candle. Then the take profit distance is computed using take profit stop loss ratio, typically between one and two, for example. Once we have defined our strategy rules, now we can use the backtesting package in Python to test the historical performance of the strategy. This will allow us to evaluate its profitability, risk reward ratio, and other key performance metrics before considering including it in a live trading system. This is our Jupyter notebook file. I'm loading the data using a CSV uh, data file, the Euro US dollar, one hour time frame between 2020 and 2023. So we have the opening, high, low, closing price and the volume and the GMT time column. I'm going to load the data by running the cell again. Then I'm applying some cleaning in case we're going to need the GMT time uh, column, just adjusting the uh, format and casting it to a date time format. Then we're going to use this function to detect the fair value gap. I'm not going through the details since this was explained and introduced in a previous video. As I've mentioned, I will be leaving a link to our previous video if you want to focus on the details of this function. The uh, data frame now looks like this. We have an additional column named fair value gap. So either we have none, we don't have any fair value gap pattern forming, or we have a fair value gap at this row, for example. In other words, these three candles are forming the pattern together. The column includes a tuple with the name, if it's a bullish or a bearish pattern, the high of the first candle in the case of bullish and the low of the third candle in the case of the bullish um, a pattern and the first low and the third high in the case of the bearish pattern. Then we have a visualization uh, cell just to visualize these uh, fair value gaps as we have done in the previous video. And now we're going to define a new function named detect key levels. So these are the support and resistance levels. It takes a data frame, uh, the current candle index, number of back candles, so 50 by default, we're going to look 50 candles back and check where we have support and resistance levels in this candles window. And the test candles uh, value is actually used to detect where we have support and resistance. In other words, I'm going to compare, imagine we have this candle, I'm going to compare this high of the candle to the highs of the 10 candles before it and the highs of the 10 candles after it. And if it is the maximum, if it's the highest point, and this is how I know that this candle is defining the uh, level of a resistance or the highest point the price can reach within uh, the previous 10 and the uh, following 10 candles. You can change this window. Sometimes I take these uh, three. So I test just 
comparing the middle candle with three candles before, three candles after. But here I'm looking for significant key levels and this is why I increased this by default to 10. Similarly, if I want to check if we have a support level, I'm going to compare the minimum of the current candle uh, to the minimums or the low values of the previous 10 candles and the following 10 candles. So in order to uh, just make things clear here, we don't have a look ahead bias because imagine I'm working on this candle. I'm not going to test this candle if this candle is a support or resistance because this will push me to uh, look for the next 10 candles. So looking into the future and that's not uh, in reality, that's not feasible. So if this is my last candle in reality, the only candles I can be testing for key levels are actually candles starting at I minus 10 and before that. Why? Because this candle, when I'm going to check if this candle, for example, is a support or a resistance uh, candle, we're going to uh, look for the left candles, but also on the right candles. And in reality, I need to have 10 candles in the future or on the right of the uh, particular candle to be able to uh, test it. So there's always this gap in the past where I can't do much. I will just have to uh, watch these candles without being able to apply any tests on them. And this is mainly to avoid a look ahead bias. The results will be uh, appended into a dictionary. So I'm going to append the support uh, levels into a list within the dictionary and uh, the resistance levels into another list within this uh, key levels dictionary. And so the last testable candle is equal to the current candle minus test candles. Remember, these are the test candles. And this is what we've just explained in order to avoid a look ahead bias. These two lines will ensure we have enough data. So our data frame obviously has to be uh, greater than 60 candles. Otherwise, we can't use these numbers into our testing. Then we're going to iterate. Imagine I'm testing, let's say, uh, the current candle of index 100. We're going to check for current candles, 100 minus back candles. So that's 100 minus 50. I'm looking 50 candles back up to the last testable candle. So that's 100 minus 10 in this case, and that's 90. So I'm testing between uh, indexes 50 up to 90 for the candle of index 100. And what I'm going to test is actually building this dictionary of support and resistance levels happening most recently in relation to the current candles index. So that's related to one candle. If I want to test if a candle is breaking a support or resistance level, I need to query these in the previous 50 candles. So we're going to define what we're calling a before and after candles. So the before candles are I minus test candles up to I, meaning these are the 10 candles on the left and on the right of a particular candle. And remember that we are iterating I over the uh, candle minus back candles up to the last testable candle. And for each of these candles, we need to test if it's higher or lower than the before and after or it's before and after candles to test if it's a support or resistance level and to define these levels. And that's what we are doing here in these conditions. And we're going to append to uh, our uh, dictionary of results the index of the uh, current high and the value of the high. So that's a small tuple with the index and the value of the high. Same thing for the support, but working with the lows. And at the end, we're going to return these key levels dictionary. Now, this function is called fill key levels. It takes the data frame and these parameters again. So the test candles and the back candles and it's going to use or call the previously defined function detect key levels. And it's going to fill it into the data frame and now this is how the data frame will look like. We have the open, high, low, close, the volume column, the fair value gap column. And now we have an additional column named key levels. So either we don't have any key levels or we do have some support and resistance levels. In other words, this column for each candle, for each row, will have a dictionary of support and resistance levels if they are happening in the previous 50 candles window. And sometimes we don't have any support nor resistance levels. It's not very clear. And sometimes we only have support levels that are uh, clearly occurring without any resistance, as you can see here. 
Now we can visualize the uh, fair value gap and the key levels together using uh, this cell uh, with the function plot fair value gap and key level key levels. It takes the data frame, the starting index of the plot, the end index, and the extension here by default is 30. So that's how many future candles you want to extend the plot for, for the fair value gap and the uh, support and the resistance levels. And this is how it looks like. And now we have, this is a resistance level. This is a support level. It starts at some point and we're going to extend it in the future just to uh, make things clearer and it would be easier to visualize and see if these uh, values or key levels are respected. And what we are aiming for as an example strategy today is detecting when a candle like this one breaks above a previous most recent resistance level and it also forms a fair value gap at the same time. So these two things are happening simultaneously now for this candle. And we can see when this happens, the price is spiking up. It has a very strong up momentum. In the bearish direction, the same thing. I'm going to uh, plot this as an example. So it's happening at 40, 50, 400 and then 17,500 uh, let's say and if we plot this it's at 17,486 it should be happening somewhere around here so this candle right here is a bearish candle breaking below a support level and it's also we can see the red zone forming at this level so it's also forming a bearish fair value gap so we expect the price to retrace back either to continue actually going down or to retrace back at this level or to this zone before continuing down but in this case as you can see the price uh, went way up and we would have been stopped by this uh, strategy anyway this is a strategy I've seen online using the fair value gap and we've coded it. It's working well. We can visualize it and now we can run a small backtest to show you how we can backtest it on real historical data. But before we do this, we need to uh, detect the break signal. So I'm defining a new function named detect break signal. It takes the data frame and it's going to check if the current candle carries a fair value gap signal. And at the same time, the previous candle has crossed a key level in the expected direction. So uh, it broke a key level somehow in the bearish or the bullish direction. Just another thing to uh, keep in mind in order to avoid a look ahead bias. We're not checking the uh, candle that breaks. Actually, we're checking the uh, last candle of a fair value gap candle of a fair value gap pattern. And if this is a defined fair value gap, we check the previous candle. And this is where we uh, we test for the breakout because anyway, we need three consecutive candles to form a fair value gap but also we check if the middle candle so that's candle minus one if it's pushing and closing below the support level or pushing and closing above a resistance level the function will return three values either zero for no uh, pattern detection no signal one for a bearish uh, breakout and two for a bullish breakout and now we add the signal in our data frame and this is how the data frame looks like we have uh, the columns that we have defined before so the key levels the fair value gap uh, columns and so on and now we have also the break signal either a bullish signal equal to two or a bearish signal equal to one and now we can overlay the signals on top of the uh, key levels and the fair value gap zones as you can see these are the purple points happening uh, here that are positioned below the candles if you have a bullish signal and above the candles if we have a bearish signal. So that's going to make it easier for us to spot where the signals are happening, where do we have a breakout. For example, this one, this candle is breaking above the previous resistance level and we have a fair value gap as well. So uh, we just have to look for the previous candle in the pattern to check for the breakout and the fair value gap is clearly happening here with this pattern. So also we have one right here and this one is an excellent one because the price went straight up afterwards. This one is a fake signal. So the price went back down. In this cell, we are running the backtesting.py uh, package to define the strategy. So I'm using a risk management approach here, uh, taking into account the stop loss distance and so on 
in order to risk 5% of the current account balance. Take profit stop loss ratio of 1.8 as a start, but we're going to optimize this. And then I'm defining the signal function. So if we have a bullish signal and we don't have any open position currently on the market, we're going to check for the previous low, the current close to define the stop loss position, the stop loss price, the take profit that's obtained as the current close plus the uh, take profit stop loss ratio times the uh, stop loss distance. If the stop loss distance is less than five pips, we're going to uh, skip this uh, trade because we're using, remember, we're using the low of the previous candle as a stop loss uh, threshold, as a stop loss uh, point. So if this is very close to the current opening price of the current uh, trade, we don't need to open the trade. It's not a very advantageous position for us. Then we have the risk amount, which is equal to the equity times the self-risk percentage. Uh, the sizing of the, um, of the trade is going to depend on the stop loss distance and the risk amount. So this is how we're taking the risk management into account for this backtest. We can pass a buy position uh, using the size in units and the stop loss and the take profit. This is exactly the uh, logic, the opposite logic for the short position. And now we can define the backtest using the data frame of data, the strategy class that we have just defined right here. Cash, $10,000 $10,000 as a starting account balance, a margin of one over 50. Uh, we're not using commissions as a first test. I'm just trying to test the, uh, the whole setup if it's working. And now we can optimize the take profit stop loss ratio parameter uh, using a grid approach, grid search approach between one to 2.2 with a step of 0 0.1. And uh, in order to maximize the returns percentage, running this will provide us a 31% returns percentage, but don't be fooled by this number. If we look at the maximum drawdown, we have a minus 73%, and this is a huge. So regardless of the rest of these parameters for the backtest, I'm not going to waste your time on this. As a strategy, as is on the hourly time frame, it's not a good strategy. The code is working well. You can experiment on this, and please do share ideas of trading strategies using fair value gaps if you have uh, any in the comments section because I'm willing to take these and test them in the next videos. For now, this is uh, our first trial using the fair value gap. I honestly never traded this before, but if you are willing to experiment further uh, using the fair value gaps, key levels, and so on, on different time frames, please do let me know in the comments section. And this would be it for now. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you are not very much deceived with the results but at least we have a working experiment. We have a working code. You can download it for free again from the link in the description of this video and uh, apply some back tests, apply some experimentation on your own and share these ideas in the comment section. Maybe I can revisit this strategy again in future videos and maybe improve these results. Thank you so much for staying that long. Until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.